Hello and welcome to the Tech Lunch Podcast, where we encourage our listeners to learn something new about tech every week. This can range from learning about new and exciting te- applications to the advancements in coding and technology. If you are always learning, you will always be a step above the rest. Take the time during lunch or during a break to listen and learn, kind of like a lunch and learn, but for the years. This podcast will open the listeners' ears to new and exciting technologies they may have not been purviewed to in the past. These topics will range from manufacturing technologies to data collection technologies and everything in between. All right. Hello, I'm Nick. Hey, I'm John. And, you know, this week we don't have Ed with us. Um, his grandbabies are in town, so yeah. I hope he's getting some good time spend, spend it with them. I know he doesn't see them very much. Yeah. So, you know, all the grandparents out there, you know, enjoy the way I got it. Um, so, you know, like this week, <clears throat> we're going to start a new series. And that new series is going to be kind of looking at the, you know, world of ergonomics, I guess you could yeah. say. Um, and also, you know, what type of stuff that the worker has to deal with that we can solve with tech. And, you know, this week, we're going to kind of open that floor, that, 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 that series up. And kind of lay the groundwork out for every episode or every group of episodes, you know, following it. And what we can, you know, and today we're going to talk about what are some of the things that we can use in tech to kind of benefit the worker and what the worker's got going on that we can change with tech. Mind you, this is not industry specific. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If we miss your industry, we're sorry. We know a lot from the manufacturing side of the house, um, a lot from the computer engineering side of the house, um, and, you know, our fair share of other just absolute randomness. And just let us know your your industry. We'll we'll talk about it. I mean, it's it's something that, like, it affects everyone. That's why this is such a generalized topic as far as, like, ergonomics or, like, what, what, what would help the worker. Like, to me, we, we say it all the time, work smarter, not harder, right? Yeah. Like, why do you think leverage and foc- fulcrum, like the focal pointer or any of that, is is a thing? Because you need a longer lever arm if you want to torque this this yeah. bolt. How in the world do you think the trebuchet came about? Yeah, exactly. Somebody got tired of throwing a rock, so somebody figured, eh, we'll oh. launch a stone. So that's that's <laughs> crazy, actually, because like you you talk about the trebuchet, but like in 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 Africa, that started out with. With you know, so they were throwing spears, and it was just mm-hmm. like, I mean, honestly, how how far could you throw a spear? If we looked at the world record for how the how far they threw a spear, you can make that further with doubling your lever arm, right? Yeah. Like so the they folk created, hook on the back of it. Yeah, and they created it. that extra piece. It's like a sling it sits in. Yeah. Kind of like the wiffle ball the, game you yeah. play when you were a kid, and you'd put it in there, and you could sling it at your friends, kind of like lacrosse-like. Yeah. Uh, but or the dog it, ball launcher. It would launcher. double your distance, sometimes okay. triple the throwing distance. And, and for someone, like, trying to catch some, like, some... I don't know zebras or or, or whatever. I guess you're just trying to catch something. The covering the distance like is is a big deal. So yeah. like that's just a cool thing in and of itself. But it's it, it comes to the core of the idea <clears throat> of what right. we we're talking about is like the, so that was to fix a problem. Yeah, and the thing is, it's like you know at that point, like you said, it's you know somebody is sitting there and you know the light bulb went off and well if we hook a stick to another stick, we can throw a big stick with pointy end further than we did before. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it, the thing is, it's not rocket science, but it's basic math. But yeah. it, and it's basic yeah. technology at its finite amount. The you know the tribesmen and the you know the Native Americans and all of them that came before us, you know, def, you know Incas and all of them yeah. defined what technology is at the most minute level of its of its existence. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're doing stuff out there with, you, you You know, you're scratching on rocks to figure out trajectories and stuff like that, right? Yeah. You're figuring out that, oh, you know, you look at look at the, the Egyptian Empire. Yeah, dude, you know, the somebody, theorem, man. Right. It's somebody crazy. figured out, let me build a giant pyramid out of blocks, mm-hmm. but I'm going to take said block and put it on top of a bunch of logs. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't take as many men to pull it up the side of, a, of, of said pyramid to put it back where it belongs. 
Yeah, they didn't have a name for it at the <clears throat> time, but like, right. they're fighting against friction and putting the logs there. They're fi- they're solving the problem right. that that they knew they had. Maybe they didn't have a word for it like right. that, like we do. But like, that's that's working Think about how the wheelbarrow came harder. out. Yeah, exactly. You know, somebody got tired of carrying something, so why not throw some of the two wheels on it and dump it? Yeah, yeah. The invention <laughs> of the wheel. Like we can go, we can keep going back, but the whole the whole point. Of, of the kind of the goal or what we're, we're, we're getting at is that, you know, labor and, and you know, laborers are, are important. There's always, yeah. there's always things to do. There's always something that needs to get either lifted or moved or, or, fixed. or fixed. Yeah. Or and in a lot of those situations, out. it's, it's very tenuous or, or it's a tedious task right or it's, or it's strenuous. It's, you know causes great fatigue you can only do it for two hours versus an eight hour shift mm-hmm. like these these are some of the problems that kind of pop up with uh with like your average with your average worker or average laborer per day like mm-hmm. if you think you thought about someone at like a steel mill or a lumber mill right. what what's the biggest issue like let's let's even bring it to we're at we'll add some tech and we'll give them a dozer or, or some type of you know machine to move right. the logs or whatever. Let's say that, but that that uh, laborer, that you know industrial uh, industrial driver, w- what else could they use to help them be more efficient? Yeah. Right. And, and the thing about it, if you think about it, you know our big you know push is the fact that you know how do you use tech to prevent repetitive stress injuries? Yes. You know that's that's the big ticket item here. Yes. Okay. You know, for example. Like you said, the dozer operator mm-hmm. or, or the, the, the loader operator, depending on, you know, what type of equipment you're using. You know, if you're clearing or if you're lifting, you know, it depends on what it is. You know, the, tra- the front end contraption is the mm-hmm. different part. However, you got the guys who are riding in solid seats, dealing with a bounce, yeah. and they're getting a stress factors like going up their spine or their back. Or, you know, they're having compression injuries because they're having, like, discs to slips and stuff like that, and they can't walk after a very long period of time. Okay. Or... You got these companies who have invested in the tech side of the house mm. that have bought the big cat loaders or the loaders from um, uh, some of our other companies out there um, that have air suspension seats in them mm. to reduce the fatigue yeah. on the driver. You know, that driver can ride and work for so much longer mm-hmm. without needing a brake because they're in a cab yeah. that's air ride, yeah. air conditioned, yeah. GPS controlled. And everything is right there in front of them. Comfortable now. But, you know, we'll, we'll dive into that part. Talk about, like, the case loaders detail, and yeah. stuff like that. Later, when we do a whole other episode season, or series, yeah. I guess you could say, yeah. based on CONAC, or construction agricultural equipment. Because that's another area where technology is actually, at this point in time, booming. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's changing the world of how we do things. <clears throat> but... You know, if you think about it, in the in a manual you know work environment, a lot of times fabric mm-hmm. is a big ticket item when it comes yeah. to technology. Yeah, like so. So you mean fabric as in um, what am I making this out of, or um, what is my harness made out of? Right. You're right. talking about nylon. You're talking about you know fall restraints. Right. You're talking about um, high level working environments. Yeah. Um, okay, or you're also dealing in like the hot climates, like we were talking about know, the guys working in steel mills. Yeah. Right. They have to be wearing clothing that is reflected to reflect the heat. Yeah, it's very and yeah it's thousands of degrees. Because if you're in the foundry there, you I mean, on, honestly, and if you have something that's not you know protected like that, it's probably gonna catch fire immediately. Yeah. And if you think about it, if you think about it, the Under Armour shirts, yeah, or the, or the fire retardant Under Armour shirts, yeah, that the U.S. military has that they can wear on convoys, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That stuff helps wick away sweat. And cools yes. you down. So the guys, the founders are wearing the same things most of the time. Yeah, and you know, instead of sweating their proverbial nuts off, you know, they're actually able to, you know, cool themselves off a little bit. And then you got the you know, the maintenance techs who are working near the founders who have the fall restraint harnesses on. Yeah. Fabric is one of the, and also you talk about like bracing, you know, knee braces and stuff like that. You got fabric that takes the biggest brunt of the technology there. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, most of that stuff is like reinforced fabric. Yeah, so that's it's crazy. It's crazy because these pieces don't have like a, a computer chip or technology in them, but they have been made using some type of like data aggregation or something mm-hmm. like that, to where they were like, this worker has done this one maneuver, thou- hundred thousand times, 
and <clears throat> he he had such, he had a stress fracture at this point. I have another user at another plant does the same job. He only got fifty thousand times through with the induction in, introduction uh, induction of like a hydro uh, like a lifter. Mm -hmm. um, you can have that worker do a hundred thousand and no injury, no wear and tear. Even if, even if, like, let's say your example of of the dozer operator, mm -hmm. um, he's in a cushy environment, yeah, but he he's not lifting anything himself, right? It's but a machine still, doing you you have to have the focus, mm -hmm. and the and I'm glad that you mentioned fatigue because, in most cases, that's the problem. Like I, so I was doing a little bit of research, and we'll get into more of like. Um, I want to talk about st increasing strength or increasing mm -hmm. like load bearing later because that's something that's actually it, in and of itself that could probably be an episode by itself just talking about oh, yeah, load those kind of applications and stuff but um, like we get in deep to it is um, some of these things that um, like you, you've got the little things as you need to focus for grip strength right you need to focus when you're, let's say, doing a precision movement, you're moving these shipping containers. Mm -hmm. You can't just swing them around wildly. You need to be very, very precise. And if we're them, yeah. and if we're increasing strength or increasing load bear, which we'll get to more in a second, you you lose a bit of that. Um, it's like wearing gloves and mm -hmm. trying to, you know, string a string a a, a thread. Through a needle, right? Like it, you lose the sensitivity, you lose the finer mm -hmm. motor controls, and and it's even in those senses, like that's where you would need more enhancement, right? Or more maybe the IIoT mm -hmm. sensors, which is like, hey, hey, ding, 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 you're outside of tolerance, like you're gonna hurt yourself, t ding, 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 yeah. and then and then if weight sensors and stuff like that, that's yeah. not only a safety concern. Yeah, you start that's dealing with read switches and IoT efficiency and concerns. You know, mm -hmm. my output, my quality increases, my quantity, I have less, let's say, I mean, if we're, we're used to saying rework, I have to go back over and redo anything for right. less. Like, at the end of the day, the amount of time spent, if you're in production on one thing, as well as the amount of time spent producing or moving, like, lumber through. Right. Minutes are golden, man. You, that's, that's, how you, that's how you make your money. And it's like, if you think about it, you know, tech in, you know, manual environments is, you know, kind of <clears throat> ever-evolving. For example, the fall restraint harnesses, I watched them the other day, when, you know, trying to go back to that for a second. There's somebody that realized that if somebody's in a fall restraint harness long enough, they will black out. They will go into some sort of cardiac shock because of the fact that it cuts off the, 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 um, uh, the blood to the the um uh the arteries in the groin. And you're talking about if they fall right. and then they're, like they're hanging there, the right. Yeah, it's, okay. it's 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 like the hanging injury. At yeah, that yeah. Point. So what they did is actually to, they actually changed the fall harness hmm. to allow somebody to kick out stirrup straps so they could stand up there you go. inside the stirrup straps and still have the same amount of fall restraint. Yeah. And so it's still, so it kind of so it kind of stops, you know, they're they're they've fallen but they're able to stand up for a second to prevent to let the blood pool back up and stuff like that. No. But you know that's you know less of the yeah. more that's that's I mean, innovation at that you, point. You've you've felt the difference of that. Like I mean, I felt it just from I'm like sitting down for like four hours. I stand up like oh this is amazing. Like yeah. I feel I feel refreshed. It's the same reason people want a stand up desk. Right. Like, it's you, like when you're stuck on an airplane and you get off and you're like, oh this sucks. Yeah, you can't stand. Up. <clears throat> Don't just stand up on an airplane for no reason. Yeah, <laughs> well, bad things will happen. Um, but the thing is, is if you think about it, as we go through through like manual movements, I really think that's going to be the kind of the topic. I guess we're talking that that, that this episode is kind of taking. Yeah, yeah. Is the the, the manual side of it. Um, is if you want to like when you're talking about moving number from one location to another, right, right. you start building in um, um, conveyors. You know, the thing is, like, the Egyptians, oh. that was a conveyor. So, yeah, in the most minute and most simple form in the world. People still use the log conveyor to this day when yeah. they don't have an electrical conveyor to move something or, or something heavy from point A to point B. Yeah, transferring things, like, it's... it's Right, it's a log transfer. Yeah, I mean... If you look. think about it, some of the logging companies use the river. 
yeah, yeah. As, a, as, a, as a conveyor belt. That's true. It just sends it from one end to another. I, grab, I mean, yeah. I mean, Gravity is a fun toy. It's the thing is, it's like, well, they're putting it on... Like gravity and buoyancy. Like, they put it on a train, and they're, yeah. and they're pushing it. It's like, there's a reason that one person's not walking every piece of lumber, or driving every piece of lumber, and they've got an entire train car... Uh, it's devoted to travel are, are, are moving this material from one to mm-hmm. one place to the other and in the the capacity that they can do those things in some cases yes it's a no-brainer yeah. of course i'm going to use a train to move tons of lumber i'm not going to just load a truck up and take it to you but in a lot of cases some of the little things that we're talking about is that's not something that you would like easily just say make the bigger machine do it yeah you, you, sometimes you can't. Like a printer, for instance, make the bigger machine do it. Okay, well, does that machine have the same nozzle? Does it fit the same thing? Like, does it is it able to print the same material? Does it say, have the same physical characteristics? Right. And I hate to bring 3D print. I actually love to bring 3D printing back into it because, you know, everything that we kind of do has some type of aspect of 3D printing. But it's it's that's a, that's another piece of... of of why is it important the the materials it's being made out of like the the precision that you need to that you need to do whatever task right uh, but that's that's important how, how does that like how so in your mind we're talking about ergonomics we're talking about in, in increasing you know uh, efficiency quantity mm-hmm. quality and things like that this this all sounds good these are all like you know yeah. Nice little KPI buzzwords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. They, that's what they are. KPI buzzwords. But if you were to boil it down, and you break it down to that, like a single worker, like if if you were to say, um, in in maybe three three sentences, how does ergonomics improve your daily job? Injury prevention. So yeah, that's easy. Yeah, you did it. This is one. No, see, and that's 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 number one. Ninety five percent of the time, you know, it's a safety issue. You yes. know, it's, um, you know, from from our seat and you know IT or mm-hmm. our seat and you know engineering, <clears throat> you know, the fact that we work with our three D printers on a on a routine basis at the house and stuff like yeah. that, you know, and the the level that we look at, you know, safety is paramount. Um, you know, say, and then you start dealing with, you know, electrification. We start dealing with some of those things. You know, safety is is, 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 is of utmost importance. Okay. So, um, yeah. And the thing is, at that point, any type of ergonomic improvements prevents repetitive stress injuries, thereby keeping your employee happier, keeping them available to you longer, Yeah. and making them want to come back to work because their voice is heard and their cha- the changes that they, they need are implemented. It's like, I, you know, the thing is, it's like, there, there's people, I've seen many, 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 many different documentaries out there where people don't take ergonomics and the ability to use tech, you know, correctly, mm-hmm. you know, and it kills your company. Like right now, I've seen things out there where they have, they, they wear a belt. I try to get them for the shop where if, if, a, if a lift is done wrong, it sets off an alarm. Mm. If, if somebody does a lift one too many times, there's automatically an alert that's sent to safety. Let safety mm-hmm. know that, hey, guess what? This shift may need another another instruction on how to lift something. Yeah. Um, or this person may need to go see medical eventually because they may have something wrong. See, that's that's a good that's a good point you bring it up because I mean, if you're anything like me, you're too proud to beg. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm feeling a little bit of pain. I'm going to grip my teeth. I'm going to keep going through. I and this th- this is something that would help with that also. Like, like the, the sensor, they're like, man, you're, yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's something that you're like, oh, I, I, maybe if I wasn't, you know, leaning on my right leg every day for 40 years, I wouldn't have a limp. Right. <laughs> so, or, or, you know. God forbid some other issue, not right. even where you can't walk. And so. if you think about it, the, the the simplest purchase a company can make out there right now is the ergo mats that are on the floors on top of concrete. Yes. The the, the safety sponge mats that people are walking on. A little memory foam. The memory foam mats that you that that you walk on at some of the shops. If those things are probably the best investment a company can make. And if you don't know anything about it, just go walk on flat concrete for not even 10 minutes and then try to walk on some memory foam. You'll, you'll know. Yeah, you'll, you'll know where you're at. 
Yeah. Um, you'll 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 thank us later. Yeah. Um, especially if you're like one of our PLC programmers and stuff like that. If you're standing on that stuff for 12, 13, 14 hours a day, yeah, you're gonna be your feet are done. Right. You're gonna have flat feet by the end of the month. Yeah. You know. Um. You know. Go to a, a memory foam, ergonomic, um, a uh, uh, flat panel. Um. I wish I knew the name of the company because we use them. Um. And they're great. I'm telling you. Um. Yeah, I can't remember to be honest. So but it's 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 if we think about it, we'll throw it in the description or something. Um, but, but it's it's one of those things where I've been standing on the concrete that was flat, and I see that mat, and I actively go to that and mat. Target it, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, this feels better. This I'm not thinking about how my feet hurt. I'm thinking about what I'm trying to do here, and it also kind of clears up one more distraction. So right. Yeah. And it's like if you think about it, you start then you start dealing with light manual lifts. And stuff like that. You start dealing on that that manual movement, you know, side of the house. You know, you got guys who are who are lifting, you know, rims and tires at the at the, at the you know right um a tire company up the street. Yeah. You know, you got those things where these people, oh, I'm gonna lift these tires all day long. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, how many you know, tires you, you, you want to do that? You want to do that day? for twenty, thirty years? Yeah. Some of you may be able to. Some of y'all just may be just you know he man and man, I'm gonna you know do this. Nah. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get a lift me- a mechanism and I'm gonna yeah. take it off my balancer. I'm gonna lay it down on top of my lift machine. I'm gonna wheel it over to a vehicle, lift it in place, and bolt it in. Yeah. Guess what? I don't have to lift it. Everybody's gritting their teeth and pushing through, and that and that's that's part of the like yeah that's part of the problem. And it's with a three D printer, guess what you can build? You can. You, not only can you make whatever you need to make your life easier, more comfortable. If that one doesn't work, you have the means to make version two. In that much quicker a time, and and we're talking about, you know, money. Time is money, and and every minute is golden. Yeah. And every minute that you spend doing something that's hurting you or that will hurt you in the long run, you're making a con a, like a, a, a considerate like opportunity cost like decision mm. whether to do it for the money so that you can you know whatever rent blah blah <clears throat> blah. But at the end of the day, if you have the means to make it easier so that you can get both. I mean, right. it, it, you know, at that, that point not? you're talking about data driven ergonomics. Yes. Um, and then how to, that's that's a, that's a big a big topic is okay. So then how do I how do I use the data? Like, what would I do to get data on if like let's say we have a worker um, building a cart and he's building the same you know same version, no difference. He's screwing these things in. Uh, four screws one side, putting the wheel on, then spinning it, keep going. Like he keeps doing that. How would I get the um, the data off of that worker's process to and use that to improve it? Like what would be your first? Well, for for cart idea. design and stuff like that, it's a little bit a little bit different because you have to watch that. You have to watch how many steps it is. You have to count how many steps it is from point A to point B, um, okay. carrying raw material from from back and forth. Okay. To assembly areas, so That's you got you got you got to think about that. You got to think about the way the material. Each piece of the material weighs something. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take a scale. I'm going to scale out every single piece of material I've got. So I'm going to know how much that that employee is lifting. Mm-hmm. And so every piece of equipment that is being used, I'm going to scale that. Right. I'm going to find out. Okay, cool. This is how much he's lifting. This is how much he's moving. This is how many steps he's taking carrying this one piece of material. So I'm going to actually take every single step you have. You're my physics guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to take every single step you have, but I'm also going to add that add your, the, your body weight to it. Yeah. And I'm going to add the weight of your what you're carrying to it. Yeah. And then also, I'm going to also possibly take into account, if I have a picture of it, the extension that you're carrying that piece at to figure out if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're having a Volcrum on your back or not by yeah. carrying it farther out. Lower back issues. Yeah. So, so but now yeah. the thing is now if you go to something even simpler, right? Tire changes. Yeah. You pick that tire up, you know a certain tire weighs this amount. Mm-hmm. Now I know if you hold that tire to a certain degree, how far your back is leaning into that. If I can if, if I can take yeah. that, and it's the thing is I can watch you do a set of four tires. I kind of, I, have, I have enough data to, to be to be in there. Mm-hmm. However, the thing is I want to do more next. I want different height to people. I want to see what's you know, going on. And you on. don't want the same person <clears throat> doing it right. every time too. And I want different size tires. Yeah. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest in a piece of equipment. That a lo- that a per- worker can load the tire onto, mm-hmm. pick it up, hold, and then it'll place it on top of the, the studs. And I'm going to run the the bolts down onto it, because the thing is, is now I know for a fact that the data driven ergonomics that I'm using just remove that much weight off of that that employee, 
it removed that much of a strain on the on, on the employer's lower back. Mm-hmm. And it also kind of tells us kind of what's going on. Yeah. You know, especially, you know, lifting, you know, quality and stuff like that. I'm not telling anybody to go out there and freaking rat on your employees. Mm-hmm. Okay, don't go out there and give them help. Um, yeah, however. Don't go calling people yeah. weak or saying they can't do right. something. Just watch like, it. It's not and about. find an easier way yeah. to do it. Exactly. Smarter, not harder than the end goal. Use data to your advantage. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not investing money in data-driven ergonomics or at least attempting your own version of data-driven ergonomics, you're paying. You're going to start paying a lot of money here eventually because of injuries. Mm-hmm. And everybody wants to be zero injury, you know? Right. I don't want any reportals if I can't help it. I don't want to do the extra paperwork and pay out the extra workers' comp for what? Yeah. For something that's totally avoidable? I... I just think that it's 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 a no-brainer that you, that you work on, you know, making your employees comfortable. I mean, it's something that we've been kind of gearing and, and moving towards as a workforce in general is making that worker's mm-hmm. life. Um, how do I keep the employee? How do I make their life better? Um, and, and, and how do I grow that employee? So, so why not take the time and, you know... Make it generalized, and also I like that you said that you know you don't just take the one worker. We're taking multiple people, so it's 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 a general, um, it's a general across the board. We're not saying, hey, Mister Outlier, Mister T, you're lifting everything. You're doing this with one arm. You don't need an extra lifter. But Mrs. Like Betty Sue, who works third shift, who's doing the same thing as you and can't lift this with one arm, mm-hmm. needs the help. And it's like the thing is, is also if you start, you know, we start, if we also we go back to data stuff, we start talking about the the, the concrete protective pads that we use, yes. um, the things yes. that, that help your feet. Honestly, the one thing that you know I'd love to see a study on um, is for the from the ergonomic side of the house is I want somebody to stand on a pressure plate, on a pure concrete, stand on a pressure plate. I want to see how much force, how much um, uh, vertical, how much downward force you're applying. Mm to that concrete when you're standing there. Because yeah. that, that thing is, that'll tell me how much vertical, how much downward force you're putting on your feet. Mm-hmm. On the small bone in your feet. Yeah, and you need arches. Most people have arches, and if you're putting flat, like, that hurts. And so then I want to do that same exact study yeah. on a, on that, on the sponge, on the, on the, 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 the right. uh, platform, right. and find out exactly how much non-vertical force I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. You know, how much did that take away? Yeah, it, it just that very much so reminiscent of the Dr. Scholl's commercials where you know and they used to have those right. little, little stands that you had in Walmart where they you still stand. do. I know it, some of them still do, and honestly, I used to use them. But like it's it shows you, yeah, your posture is probably why your knees hurt. <laughs> yeah, and that that right there. If if we went to Dr. Scholl's and said, hey, we if you save the data from all of these things, we can you know. Go to Adidas and make a damn shoe that's so much more comfortable for the general public. Yep. And that's data-driven, and it's ergonomic, and it's production, and you're making money off of that. So it's like all these things kind of combine into how do we make a better product. Right. And that's also one of the end goals is, is like we're talking about how do I make the worker's life better or how do I enhance the worker's capabilities. But at the end of the day, why would we want to do that? You know, the big thing is just taking care of the people that take exactly. care of you. And, you know... It's quality of life Right, it's quality of well. life, exactly. Because the thing is, if you work for, if you, if you work for me for 20 years, I, I want you to, and you retire, I want you to enjoy the next 60. Yeah. You know, I, I, want, I don't want you hurt. I don't, I don't want you to have to deal with, you know, long eat that stuff. I want you to spend as much time with your family as you can. Yeah. You know, because you worked hard for the, for the retirement that you have, and that's just how it goes. So, and the thing is, is it should be the goal of every single company out there that is actually taking that to heart. Yeah. And understanding that, you know, at the end of the day, you got to do that stuff. You know, you got to start looking into it. You know, the thing is, if you say, hey, I can't afford certain things. You know what? I guarantee you that your um, uh, finance department will unclip... You know their their wallet their 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 pocketbooks. You know their change purse is a little bit because you know them guys. Yeah. Um, they're all the same. Um, and they'll give you the extra you know coin out of their purse to let you go buy a three D printer if it's going to help the greater good. 
Yeah. You have fab, you have stuff out there like TPU and stuff like that that you can use to reduce certain you know stress impacts. Yeah. You know if your hammer if you're handling a hammer all day long you're getting that stress impact back into your hands. Why don't I take TPU and print a friggin' a handle for it on a, on a hammer that where I can or or where screw it gun dissipates the where it dissipates yeah. the heat and that vibration that you're dealing with. Yeah. Because the thing is, is like you get these digital torque guns out there right now. You got you're holding those things in your hand the entire time. You don't have any feedback. Yeah. The machine does it yourself. However, those things as a constant grab can start causing carpal tunnel. However, if you print a, a wrap for them with TPU, it'll actually prevent that from happening because it gives that little bit of a sponge. Yeah, it's it's like I, I think one of the best examples that that you know I I think about. You know, constantly when I'm talking ergonomics or how something improves something. So my sister's a power lifter, and not for nothing, she's lifting some heavy weights. Uh, <clears throat> at the end of the day, she she told me how much she lifted unassisted, and then said I need to get my belt so that I can do my personal record, right? My max. Yeah, your PR. And, and and I, you know, looking at that, I was like, okay, well, let's think about this. Why why is this helping you? It's keeping your diaphragm firm. It's mm. keeping your core solid. Realistically, you don't need it unless your core is a little bit weaker. And I'm not saying that she has a weak core because she does curls more than, you know, probably all of us combined. She's probably done more curls um, or crunches than both of us in this entire year, past year combined. I'm going to be honest. Mm. I'm at zero. <laughs> so, I'm at whatever but, it takes me to get out of bed. Yeah, right. I guess if you count that, yeah, right. <laughs> but but no, but I'm but what I'm saying is is like that was one thing is it is is assisting you in a lift. Right, exactly. And then straps for, you know, keeping your wrist straight when you're when you're benching. Yep. Like knee braces, you know, all of those things. Yeah, compression straps. There's I people have been using them for years. Yep. People have been doing this and making things and and the that's the proof right there. If if everybody's increasing in their maxes and they're moving in those personal rec- records, of course it. Like, what does it not make mm-hmm. sense that you're you're trying to be you're trying to better yourself? You're trying to make your life yeah. easier. Now, granted, in those cases, it's extreme and they might be causing injury anyways. But and the thing is, is also Why you know, at, at a follow-on episode, we'll get into the uh, exoskeleton side of the house. Yeah, where that's the, really cool. Where the, you know, the, what was it, a Japanese company that came up with the seat that they There's, wear on the back of their jean, back of their pants. They kind of just sit down. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You can So you can be standing there, and then if you're waiting for the bus, you can, like, prop a seat with your, yep. yeah. There, there was another yeah, one that was. you in a comfortable situation, right? Something that I think was, I think it actually started out in the military, which it just grips around your hamstrings, your yep. quads. And all it's doing is moving, it's like helping you move that forward, and it's not really taking and you know removing the load, but it's helping you continue your movement. And in yeah. a lot of cases, if you're you're moving, your body's not feeling mm. the downward force. Yeah, I've seen the ones that are also air assisted, but the thing is, is you'll never cre- you'll never creep up on somebody with a you know an air compressor going on yeah. your back, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. You know, you ain't going anywhere fast with that. But. All right, Mr. Billion Dollar Man. <laughs> yeah, go and sneak up on me. You know, but you can carry a freaking, you know, metric butt ton. Right. You know. Fast and slow, or <laughs> slow, and, slow and loud. Right. <laughs> you can jump off a cliff, but, you know, you need you know, walk away from it. But, that's, e- but that's one of the things. We talked about, like, Iron Man, and everyone's like, man, that's a comic book. That's not, that's not possible. Blah. We're getting to it. Look. We're getting so close. Now, granted, everything that we have is very bulky, and it's not going to be this nanotech, the CGI that they're putting him putting on there. But yeah. I've already seen 3D printing someone make the Iron Man helmet function mm-hmm. like it is. Now, it's not going to you know, be uh, durable. Oh, there's a guy I watch on YouTube that has one that's his welding mat. Right, and it's... it's He's got the, the welding ones. The isn't thing it? is, is it, st- it starts out as a joke. Right, and you're like, huh, I'm gonna do this just because I think it would be funny, and then you're like, hold on, I've got something here, mm-hmm. and then it grows, and then this man, next thing you know, this man's Iron Man, right? I'm not saying that's what's gonna happen, but like that's how innovation and these things are are, are working, right? And without pushing those boundaries or starting in maybe science fiction, 
Yep. Star Trek. You're not gonna you're not gonna change what you already know because someone's already done it. Right. And the thing is it's like, you know, you got these guys who grew up, you know, we all grew up with, you know, that Trekkies or as you know, Star Wars fans and stuff like that. I'm still waiting for that teleport. Yeah, the teleport thing without scrambling your internal organs is you know, gonna be fun. Um uh, no, you're not gonna be the same person. Oh no, you probably won't be in the same order. It'd be the um, same Adams. Yeah. Just <laughs> different <laughs> different direction. Um so I'll give you a new uh, new new meaning for headache. Um, but <laughs> you won't feel nothing. I promise you. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like don't be afraid to innovate. Yeah. You know the the worst the worst thing I, I hear, and I've heard it on so many occasions, and read it on so many forums and stuff like that, is we don't want to innovate. Well, why? Too expensive. It's too expensive to move in the twenty first century because we don't make enough on our product. Charge more. You're already selling it. Mm-hmm. If you sell millions of dollars, if you sell over one, if you sell you know hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of product, let me tell you something. You can up your prices a little bit, people are still going to buy it. That'll help you innovate and take care of your employees. If you have a workforce that's 100% sedative, that are sitting behind a desk all day long, mm-hmm. invest in stand-up desks. Invest in um, you know desks where they can put their feet up a little bit to keep them up off the ground. You know, more comfortable ergonomic chairs, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Invest money in what makes you money. The people. That's actually the best. The best way you could put that too is that's that's how you make your money. So why would you not put everything into giving them the quality and making them want to stay? Because if you're not innovating and you're not getting those ergonomics, or you're not improving the, mm-hmm. the life of your workers, I bet you somebody else will. Oh yeah. The thing is, is one of the best studies I've seen was actually from the Boeing Corporation. Yeah. Boeing has an entire team that flies out to you when you first get hired. Mm -hmm. And they do an ergonomic study on you to find out what you need. To find out your standing desk type, your height that you need, your chair that you need. Yeah. The way that you're going to put your feet up, how to set up your alarms and your laptop that tell you when to get up and walk, walk around. You know, yeah. when to get away from your desk for a few minutes because they don't want you dealing with brain fog or fatigue. You know, it, it's, you know, you start getting into some of those things in other companies too. You know, companies that are dealing with you know, national security stuff or rockets or some other stuff. You know, that type of stuff. You start dealing in, in, in that type of world of where it's like, okay, cool, guess what? I don't, we don't have enough time for this. But in the long run, you do. Spend time to take care of those people. It's going to benefit you in the long run. You know, manual movements is, is one thing. You know, the thing is, is take care of the people doing it. Yeah, and that's and that's huge to me is like, for for companies that preach loyalty. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I'm not, so this is not saying like, like calling someone out for, for, you know, lying through their teeth or anything, but if you're preaching loyalty and you're preaching quality and your family business or values... Mm-hmm. What, what, what does it hurt you to take care of, of somebody? Make their job more efficient, and they'll make more of whatever you need. Right. So, like, I can guarantee you, and I'm not talking about trying to squeeze life out of people. Like, say someone works for 20 years, you're trying to get five extra years because you made something ergonomic for them. No, you maybe made that job, like, you, you maybe made that one job doable by someone part-time. Mm-hmm. For, for, you know, 20, 30 years. That's not only saving you work uh, in, in the labor hours, but it's also you have a part-timer that's producing like a full-timer now. So in the sense that we were talking about earlier is if, mm-hmm. if, you, if you think you don't have enough money, you're overstaffed then. You're right. or, or you're not selling your product for enough. There's something in your business model that's causing you to, to actively make the decision not to improve. And we go over budget a lot. Budget's annoying. I get it. Everybody has a budget. You can't overspend or you have to deal with it next year or someone else has. you have to ask for a favor to help, whatever the case is. But at the end of the day, you will be more upset when your budget is zero because you're not making anything and you're bankrupt because everyone quit for yep. the company that's going to take care of their team. I can tell you when I used to work, you know, some part time jobs growing up, you know, at, at least, you know, actually when I was, you know, yeah. after I got, you know, while I was in college, 
it's like, you know, I worked at, you know, the big lots, advanced auto and some of those places, you know, and it's the, the people who quit first are going to be your um, cashiers. You're stuck standing all day long. Oh, it's you're, terrible. You're not standing on, on fatigue mats. If you if if you got you know even part time cashier standing on fatigue mats, you're gonna lower their chance of an injury, mm-hmm. and you're also break you're not, you're gonna say oh cool they may come back or give them a chair, and a fatigue mat. Well, they well Lidl's, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, but no, there's a point. Well, like, Lidl they just don't even stand up. Like, so I'm just gonna say like but Lidl, I, but they they've got it down to a science though. Yeah, Lidl's a, Lidl's a good example. Yeah, they like, let their people realize they 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 they're comfortable, they're ergonomic. They charge you for bags, so they're oh, they're making they're, one thing. They're always making money. There you go. They yeah. don't have to handle charge bags for, the bags. for you. Yeah. <laughs> they, they charge you. They charge you twenty five cents for the cart. It, it, the thing is, is you do it's like a workaround, it's like Sam's. But the thing is, we is, lost so many people. When I was a retail store manager, we lost so many people because of that. But the thing is, is their people are more comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's that's the whole thing. Long. Is yeah, exactly. European company. Running around, you know, crouching, standing, climbing a ladder, like yeah. going to the cashier register and checking people. It, it's it's wear and tear. Yeah. Usually, people are taking, you know, almost well more than twenty thousand steps per person. Mm-hmm. So why can't we make that better with, you know, some type yeah. of tech? I can t- I can tell you, there's days of where you know we were, you know, doing what we do at work. I walked five or six miles. I didn't even leave the same building I was in. Yeah. You know, it, it's just one of those things. But, you know, can, can you... Your smart can, watch is just like, are you sure you're good? Are you running from something? Yeah. Are you alive? <laughs> <clears throat> but, you know, the thing is, is that's when it's on me to purchase, you know, better boots and all the other stuff. But that's the thing is, 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 you know, invest in the ones that make you money. That's, that's the goal in this. Because the problem is, you never know what you're going to have until it's gone. That's true. And the thing is, is listen to your people. Talk to them. Hey, you know, what, what, what can we do better to make this is more ergonomic? It's a little bit more comfortable for you. Have those conversations. They're hard conversations. Believe me, they're going to be hard. You're not, you're not going to want to hear an employee tell you straight to your face that, hey, guess what? This work environment blows because I'm stuck standing on, you know, um, you know, 18 peen concrete, Mm-hmm. You know, that you thought was fun looking when you decided to stay in it instead of putting down a damn mat. And it happens. And the thing is, is, you know, get ready for those conversations. Suck your pride up, you know, and, and, and listen to your people. The thing is, is you get, you know, you've probably seen it working mm-hmm. in retail. The, the reason why most people don't want to tell you anything is because of pride. The other reason is because you don't ask. <laughs> it's almost always because you don't ask. I can guarantee you that that person doesn't have a problem with it. But you didn't ask them, so you wouldn't know. Right. Right? Because a lot of the times, I'm like, hey. Because it was, it was, we would get boxes on boxes of, like, T-shirts. Thousands of shirts that need to be folded and put out before the day ends, mm-hmm. which is only a 10-hour day, which I know to say only a 10-hour day. But, like, that means we need three people constantly folding these and cleaning the ones that are getting unfolded. So... It, it, it became a, we need to make a process to make this more efficient, or we need to figure out some type of item, and the simplest item in the world, uh, uh, like a, something the size of a cutting board, a folding the board. folders. It, it changed everyone's, and that's one item. You get a folding table, and that table has certain compartments, like a organizi- organization is something, too. You were talking about it earlier. If that worker has to walk over and grab tools or parts and come back, like the organization, if those tools are already right there next to his workstation by design, you've taken time off there. And it's the same thing. Whenever I was getting them to fold T-shirts, I have everything set up by design. I have the sticker, the sizing stickers mm-hmm. set up, so you don't have to go walk and grab any unless you're refilling them. I have set stations ready for these things because we need to devote almost an entire person non-stop the entirety of the day to finish. Yeah. And most times we still don't get to finish. And the thing is, at least you asked. And the thing is, there's people out there that don't. Yeah. They don't ask that question of well, what, what what can we do yeah, exactly. to take and care of this problem. To, to ask, and, 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 and that's the thing is, I ask them what would, what would they need? And they're like, oh, I really hate having to do this. All right, well, let's look at it. Yeah, figure it out. Yeah, it's like, this is the worst part of this, this routine. 
Okay, well, why don't we do this differently? So if you think about this, if you don't ask, yeah. that employee is now going to go to their friends. And their friends are going to go, so how's it like to work there? Oh, it sucks. The environment's, you know, the environment's terrible. I guarantee they're, they're you. Not, they're not, it's not very ergonomic. It's terrible on my back. I'm always sore. You know, they're telling their friends and family this. They don't want to come and work for you. So now you lose, pay, now you lose people. If you change that status quo, mm -hmm. you will get somebody that goes, oh, you know what? I actually enjoy working there. They've done this for me. They've done this for me. They think about this. You know, it's like institute a stretching program also on top of all of it. Yeah. You know, and you a yoga, yoga class. <laughs> so, not kidding. so much. Yeah, um, <laughs> I tried yoga. I was uh, less than ten minutes. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm good. Um, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. But you know, the thing is, it's just if you bump up that ergonomics a little bit, yeah, you get people coming back. You see, and that's and that's the huge part is that, yeah, you know, it, it shows you care. First off, it shows you're putting an investment in your worker. So, in my mind, how, how, why would I want to work harder? Right. Because I'm working for not just someone. I'm working because, hey, I, not necessarily that I feel like I owe you, but I think that it's my responsibility because you're taking care of me to do what I agreed I could do in my first, you know, interview. Right. And I'm, I'm going to come through with my part because it's very clear to me that you're following up on yours. Right. And it, and it builds that, la that layer of trust. And not just that, it, it, you know, creates a good environment for, you know, um, feedback if you're asking, you know, things like that. And it's like, hey, uh, I don't like lifting this thing right here. Uh, but it's not that bad as long as I just don't have someone. I have someone that's standing and staring at me the whole time, waiting for me to finish. It's kind of weird. They're in my way a little bit. Let's move this around. Yeah. Right? Or can I get something that will help me lift this? Yeah. Or I get. Or can we give them? Lifting mechanism. Uh, yeah. Can we get them into the process to help me lift this? Right. right. Get them to help grab the other side. Or a piece of equipment that will do it for me. Most of the time, it's going to be equipment. <laughs> Most you of the know, time. You know, a lifting arm equipment. or something like that. You know, it's still, we're not taking the worker out of the equation. Because yeah. they still have to operate it. We want someone, and, and they're probably the most expert at yeah. you know, that. Yeah, just a, just a, an operator process. assist you know, a, a platform. Exactly. You know, something to make life simple. Exactly. And, you know, the thing is, is work smarter, not harder, and have a little bit of fun with it. And, oh, man. You know, and the thing is, is also work safer. Yeah. That's the big thing. Work safer. You know, what is ergonomics? Safety. Safety, efficiency, you know, you know comfortability. And, and the thing is, is you know, I'm, I'm an IT guy. You yeah. know, an IT guy, you know. You know I, I think we're great say, examples, to I, be honest I, with I, you. I, I, I guess you could say for going, you know, part-time engineer. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say part-time, now. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, it's like you, you look at some of the stuff that you think technology can do all this for you. It can. It can help you a lot. Mm -hmm. It can save you a lot of time. It can save you a lot of energy. If you have the data to back it up. If you are running a plant... Do a plant-wide ergonomic study. Yeah, make the data work First, for you. First, second, and third shift. And find out what is going on. Mm -hmm. If you have repetitive stress injuries happening in these areas, sprained back, sprained ankles, sprained this, that, this, another, go out there and watch it. Yeah. First, second, third shift. Find out what's going on. Be a fly on the wall. Because you, you can see a pattern. And, you know, find out what the issue is. And then start ordering. Mm -hmm. And it, it, the thing is, it, order from your home country, too. For the love of God. Yeah. Because the thing is, that's the quickest way you're going to get it before you outsource. Yeah. Um, if you can't, okay, outsource is fine. But the thing is, is, you know, save that, you know, a little bit of that energy. It also, yeah, it also get there quicker if it's, you know. Right. And it gets your people faster. They'll show, they'll show that you care, that you actually put a little bit of effort into it. Because you spent a little bit more to buy something that was from where you're from. And you support yeah, local economy. It's, it's like gestures like that, though, that it's... It's data driven, right. and and not only data driven. Like I mean, it's it's to me. I've seen it work countless times. Is is you know management goes to meetings where they're like, how do I get my team's buy in? You get your team's buy in by showing you give a damn, you care. Yep. And and easiest way is how do I make your job easier? It's a simple question. Is all it is. That's that's all it. Yeah. I, I mean. And and if it's something to make someone's job easier, I mean, this is what I was you you were talking about earlier. Like, yeah, we're in IT, but I think we're actually good examples of 
of what the core essence of why you would want to make something ergonomic is, is that we are inherently lazy in yeah. the sense that I don't want to do it. Make the computer do it. Write a script so you only have to do 30 minutes of work now and the script does it 300,000 times the rest of the year. And you don't have to do it anymore. You did it right. for one time. So, like, in, in, our, in my mind, that's, the, that's one of the perfect examples is us. We, we, we want to make it better so that we don't have to ever look at it again and we want it to be right because we don't have to ever look at it again. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's a few things that, like, is it, very important and it shows in, in not even just what we, in our work, in, in other departments' work, too. Is oh, yeah. You can tell when, when management's bought in. And the problem is, is you have very little of that. Um, yeah. yeah, not to call anybody out, but hey, it's um, if, if, you take, if you take offense to, to that to that comment, then guess what? You're <laughs> the target of that. Um, if you don't feel you, like you're oppressed, you are the oppressor. Right. <laughs> the thing is, is also you know the the managers out there, the company owners that don't know what their employees do on a daily basis. Yeah. Do me a favor. Get off your ass. Go walk out there and, and sit in their shoes, learn what they're doing, find out that you'll, you'll find out more, more information mm -hmm. from going out there and having a simple conversation and watching the process or heck, even be part of the process. Yeah, you can get my respect. And, you know, guess what? Then you go, oh, you know, we need to change this. This doesn't work. Mm -hmm. This is painful. Well, congratulations. You figured out a problem. I'll fix it. Yeah, right. You know, but that's just here yeah. or there. Um, so, you know, I think that's going to bring us to the end, uh, for this week. Yeah. Um, you know, went a little long, but you know, it's a topic that needed to be covered. Um, and you know, that leads us to next week's topic. I think next week's topic, I think we're going to start talking about the, the exoskeletons a little bit and how so those can help with, uh, a little bit of the ergonomics. Oh man, so much, so and not, not even just labor intensive jobs. It's right. crazy. It's crazy. So, you know, that's what we'll talk about next week. Um, you know, y'all stick around, you know, take a listen. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm going to say this very candidly. Um, take care of the people who take care of you. But also, thank you, every single one of you um, who are out there listening to us. Um, we saw a massive upkick in listeners this past month. Um, massive. Yeah. Um, we didn't even post an episode last week, and we apologize for that. Um, so, now the week before that, I posted that one early. Sorry, my bad. Maybe we should calendars. Start doing cal that calendars more. are a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's okay. So, um, the thing is, is you know, we thank you from the bottom of my hearts. Y'all, y'all are you know listening from all over the world. I can see new countries pop up on our, up on our, up on our thing that tells us exactly who's listening to us. Um, you know, we're we've, we're trying to push out to more and more platforms and stuff like that for y'all to get to it. Um, some of y'all turned us on to new platforms that we didn't even know was out was out there until you know this time around. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for that. Um, so you know, guys, I want to say thank you. You know, I appreciate y'all, um, and you know, keep listening. Uh, by the way, we did uh, just launch a new um, <clears throat> apparel at Vulcan R three D website. Go check that out uh, for some of your. Um, um, your Tech at Launch t-shirts. Also, some of your, your 3D printing lifestyle t-shirts are going to be on there here soon. So, uh, you know, go check those out. You know, let us know what you think. You know, help us out. You know, help us help you. Maybe we can bring you a little bit more, some more interesting things. Um, also in May, be, be on the lookout for some stuff coming from uh, Rapid TCT. So, you know, we hope to, you know, see you all then. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you later. I'll turn it over to John for the final words. Hey, yeah, guys. You know, Echo, Echo with... Uh... You know, Nick said thank thank you. Um, it's astonishing to see the jump that we got with, you know, even on a, like for me, I would have considered it a down week because we didn't post anything. So it's it's you know, it's crazy to see. It's it, it makes you you know it makes your heart feel good, and it's something that we're working towards. Um, one thing that I kind of want to challenge you guys. It's it's less so an active challenge, more so a go watch this thing. Um, so. Uh, Relativity Space is, uh, they've been trying to launch this fully 3D printed rocket for, for about a week and some change now. Yeah. Um, and they are about 24 hours out now. Well, I guess I should, th so Wednesday, what's, what's 10 PM. tomorrow? 10 p.m.? 10 p.m.? I think it's 9.20. Second? Yeah. Everyday Astronaut is streaming 
Yeah. Um, at uh, you need to say, that's Eastern time. Yeah, Eastern. So uh, U.S. Eastern time. <clears throat> and they'll be launching. I think I think liftoff is at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time out of uh, Cape Canaveral Slick 63 um, down there. Um, this is an unmanned launch. Yeah. So and you know let them know that uh, you, you heard from it from the Tech at Lunch podcast. Yeah. Um, you know that or you know us over at the uh, Volcanar Technology Solutions you know YouTube page. Mm-hmm. Um, so. It's 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 actually amazing. It's 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 crazy to know that they printed this thing fully three D, you know, from the nozzle on the engines all the way to the tip of the of the first stage. It's it's or the last day. It's crazy. And I would love to see it successfully launched. I know it's disposable and that's like a you know, it's a start, but check it out. I, I challenge everybody to look at mm-hmm. that. I challenge everybody to, like, this should get you thinking about some of the possibilities. I think they have on there the payload is an actual um, Stargate printer that they printed some of the rockets for. It's a, um, one of the, it's a, the first chunk of steel printed from the Stargate. Yeah, so like they've got, the they've, first yeah, it, which is crazy the fact that they can even make a Kuka robot do that. So it's something to look at. It's something that we kind of, I, I kind of stumbled in. Nick showed me. It's amazing. Check it out. Um, as far as, you know, our podcast, stay tuned, guys. We have a lot of things kind of in the works. You know, the Rapid TCT Conference. We've got a few other things with the single point lessons and some of the series that we'd like to do. So um, please, please stay tuned. There's more content coming. And, and once again, we appreciate all of you. All right, y'all. Have a good one. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Tech at Lunch podcast, where we hope you learned something about tech during your break or during your lunchtime. If you did, please give us a follow to prevent missing future episodes. If you have any ideas or something you want to hear or learn about, please send us a show idea to podcast at vulcanora.com. Hope you have a good rest of the day and continue learning.